Hello, everyone, and welcome to podcast number 48 of The Real Estate Show. I'm Cherie Selly, and with me is Judy Steenland. We are a part of Selly Group Real Estate, a tiny but mighty boutique brokerage right here in Colorado Springs. And we are so excited to be back with you, even in this ever-changing market that we're experiencing, aren't we, Judy? Uh, whiplash is the best way to explain it right now. That's exactly right. It's like yeah. push-pull. Put What's happening? Yeah. Everything is happening. Yes. I think that's the best way to describe it. Everything is happening, and it's happened in an abrupt way. Right. So let's go through the stats, and then we're going to break it down even more and right. to what it means. So um, as of shooting this podcast on May 25th, we still only have April's stats in for the average price home sale, but April was 561,907, which was up from 539,684 in March, so a month prior to April. Um, and the average price home had jumped 4.1% in a month, 16.6% um, up from April of 2021. Mm -hmm. Now, the median price of a home didn't have quite as big of a jump. So it was at 484, 450, up from 475 in March. So there was a 2% increase in the median price home, but it was still up 14% from April of 2021. Right. But guys, we've talked about it. The headwinds are changing. Mm -hmm. And so today, um, as we speak, there are 1,247 active single-family homes on the MLS with 918 existing homes. That's way up. I was going to say, weren't we at under 200? I mean, it's and been some a, of these podcasts yeah. earlier in the year, we That's were. Right. At the beginning of the year, it was yeah. like, there's less than a few hundred right. existing homes yes. in El Paso County that are active. That's yeah. exactly right. And as Ben Day so amazingly keeps the stats for everybody from, he's the managing broker at Liv Sotheby's and a good friend. I He mentioned in one of his latest reports that we are 325% increased in single family listings in 80 days. 325% increase in yeah. inventory. Yeah, that's a lot. And that really explains a lot of the whiplash. I mean, from the showings to offers to just what our sellers can expect right now. So much so. Yeah. I mean, there's just more choices, right. more competition. Um, price reduction. So this was interesting. I just looked it up right before we started airing that um, in the last seven days, there were 376 new listings. Um, but we had 203 price reductions. Yeah. So for every new listing that comes up, it's almost like a one-to-one -one ratio, not quite, but close. Then there seems to be a price reduction. Does that mean the sky is falling? By no means. Yeah. This we are not seeing property values decline at a rate that is alarming. We're just not seeing the multiple offers. We're not seeing the, the traffic that we've been used to seeing. So it does feel like whiplash because we're putting houses on the market. And instead of having six, seven offers, 15 offers, day one and two, I mean, we're on the market sometimes two weeks now. I think the average is 14 days now, That's right? right? That's exactly yeah. right. That's the average. And that's changing. You know, it might be even different um, in the next few days or weeks. Yeah. Uh, so the days on the market had gone from four days. And most of those days were basically because people were getting their multiple offers and setting a deadline. Right. To now 14 days. And some of these listings are going way beyond that. Yes. It, it doesn't mean that the home is horrible or falling apart, you know? Yeah. I do think we're getting back to a place where standards are going to be higher. There's more choices where we have to be really intentional about setting the price at a realistic expectation. We've been setting them at a very hot, the very highest end of the spectrums. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to have to assess and these price reductions are coming from the lack of traffic, lack of offers. And we're going to have to go from the highest end of that spectrum to probably more of the middle range or even on to be more competitive on the lower side of that range. I agree, Judy. That is very well said. And I, I really believe if a, in the sellers, here's the thing for sellers, because they set the price. They decide. We give them the information. Yeah. We give them all the tools 
but ultimately the seller has to take accountability and responsibility for the price right. of the home. And what's so interesting about it is that if a seller's mindset is stuck back in February, the end of February, we were getting multiple offers like nobody's business mm -hmm. or March yeah. even. This isn't March's market. Yeah. Now that we're into summer and this will be airing in June, we have to have a different strategy to be effective with sellers. We do. We do. And I do feel like this weird little two-week period that we're sitting in right now, we are walking right through high school graduations. Air Force graduation is today. There are a lot of things that we do experience a little bit of a lull, mm -hmm. I think, every year this time of year. But it feels even more abrupt because people are expecting, you know, those – the. 20 offers on their homes That's and so right. um, there are traditional markers that you and I both watch mm -hmm. whether we're getting many off or many showings and no offers or no showings those are usually indicators that we need to do a price reduction um, but even more so right now we have to be on top of that and Judy you and I were talking about this but I mean just for people to know like where that marker is on thinking about price reductions yeah. if if it has to come up in a discussion. And by the way, it's so weird to say those words. Right. Because we haven't done price reductions no, in forever. <laughs> it hasn't been a discussion. But yeah. when would you say it's key? Like how many days in is a marker for you? Well, average days on market are 14 right now. So traditionally, we would usually talk about that in a, in, a, in a traditional market, I would usually wait 30 days mm -hmm. um, to make a price reduction. We're making those 10 and 14 days in. So we're making them pretty quickly because we're, we're hearing from buyers. And if there's no... Um, uh, grounds to continue at a higher price, then it's not serving anyone well. The market is pricing homes. Yeah. The market is speaking. Yeah. And it doesn't mean buyers are gone and we're still historically undersupplied, even if we have a thousand homes in inventory. Yeah. But p buyers have more choices. Their payments are higher. I think condition of a home is key and sellers being realistic. Yeah. That, you know, there's always the exception. There's always the house, even in this market right now, as we speak. And very, very recently, you and I have seen the other side where some homes have had many offers yeah. right at the beginning. I had one um, very recently where we wrote uh, for a home that was listed at 685 And we wrote an escalation, believe it or not, um, up to 800000 with our clients. So I see those yeah. eyes. Yeah. I don't you've had you don't even know the story. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so we thought it was a slam dunk. I get a call from the agent as I'm in another closing this week, this past week, and they said, sorry, you didn't get it. An eight fifty cash offer beat you out. Oh my. And the list price was six eighty five. It was a specialty home. It was on half an acre in the trees in town. Yeah. Fully renovated, fully remodeled. It was because these buyers that are paying everything to get in a home now. Yeah. They can't afford to do all the renovations. Right. And so the home was complete. The setting was perfect. Yeah. So that was an exception to this rule. And I think Colorado Springs is an anomaly in the fact that there are always going to be those exceptions because there are only so many homes with views. There are only so many homes in specific areas mm -hmm. that draw people in because of the outdoors, the trail systems, et cetera. I, there is always going to be those exceptions here locally, especially. I agree. Yeah. But, but the thing is, each home needs an individual assessment. That's absolutely even more important right now. So much so. Yeah, we could talk a lot more about that. <laughs> I tell you, I mean, we, we really could. We could talk all days. Um, but I love just wrapping up. Yeah. The idea of thinking about a, a strategy that is more conservative for a seller than it was in March. Yes. Meaning you know, maybe you don't go for beyond all comps and, and try to shoot out of the park. Right. But to stay um, more conservative so that there may be still the traction mm -hmm. that a seller is hoping. Yes. It may not be the exact same traction, but you might have a very good outcome if, if the probability is greater and you're not going to the extreme. Well, and the reality, Sharice, is there's still a lot of growth in equity where sellers are selling now. I mean, we're what was the percentage from year over year? 
Oh, it was at 14%. Yeah, so we're still 14% higher than last year. Yeah. So right now, even if we're not listing on the high end of the, sp the spectrum, we're still listing higher than what it was last year. Absolutely. Yeah. That's right. Such a good point. Well, Judy, we could talk about this for so much longer, but we're going to have to catch everyone on our next episode. And thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for letting us help you navigate through these crazy real estate times. Um, we are so grateful to bring our experience and to help you journey through this. So please reach out to us with questions. Please reach out if you're not in this market and you're looking for help in another market. We can connect you to brokers in other parts of the nation. So thank you and we'll catch you next time. See ya.